What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo. And in the last video, I mentioned at the very end of it that Ash is an absolute god. This guy is absolutely ridiculous. And the first thing that we got to take a look at is just the aesthetics of this character. I think Ash looks pretty freaking amazing. I really have an affinity for characters that are evil on the villainous side, dark, more or less. And this guy's the epitome of dark. Got a little freeze going on, pretty much normal. But I love the green eyes, and I just I just love this color scheme. Very, very simple. And he just he looks awesome. He looks awesome. But when you look at this guy's kit, you really can see why he's actually so strong. Now, I was lucky enough to get this guy to A1. This is the car set we're going to be used. We'll talk about that here in a second. But he is ridiculous, guys. And for a lot of reasons. You know, I mean, the 30% PG rate, of course, is great. And I've always mentioned that increased damage by 18% on critical hit. It's, it's nice, man. You hit like a complete truck. But the extra, the 4% critical rate, I mean, the highest we've seen before was 3.2%. And now that we got these 4%, that 0.8%, it makes a big difference, especially on a character like Ash, who does a lot of hits. That's the thing about this character. He does a lot of hits, which means he does a lot of critical hits, which means he's going to do this a whole lot. And then, of course, the darkness attack damage increase is awesome. The blast skill attack damage increase is really awesome. That actually synergizes really, really well with the BS Volume 1 stone. And then the attack increase. But the immune to darkness is pretty sick for Nightmare Geese. And really sick in PvP for characters that he's facing that have darkness. But he deals darkness damage equal to 250% of attack to the target every successful attack. So whether you're doing a basic attack, whether you run through your active skills, whether you're doing your 3PG, your default, it doesn't matter... You're going to be dealing darkness damage. There's no, there's no specific text on here, no cooldown, nothing like that. And then whenever you have Ash on the team, you know, the regular Fest version, you get an extra increase of active skill damage by 140%, which is just, it's pretty ridiculous, you know. And then increase HP by 20% when Psyche is on the team. So if you want to add a little extra survivability, you can just put Psyche on the team. I can tell you guys, even at A1 on my account, Ash, like... Survivability really wasn't a problem for him. He does so much damage. He breaks the meter so fast because he does so many hits. Whenever you're trying to break meters in Guild Raid, that's always the thing. You, you In order to break it fast, you need to do an insane amount of hits while a certain dot is applied. He also is immune to fear, which makes him godly in PvP. A lot of the meta characters have fear. And this is the way that they CC their opponents. Ash is like, F you. You're not going to fear me, bro. I'll freaking whoop your butt. Right? You're not going to do it to him. It's just, it makes him pretty damn broken. It really does. And this here, now this looks pretty light because it says 20% chance to decrease the cooldown of the third skill by 100% for three seconds upon landing skill guard included ends. Now here's the thing that you need to remember about this. It's still on 20 second cooldown, but it says 100% for three seconds. Okay? It decreases the cooldown by 100%, which means that it will constantly reset for this entire three second duration if it procs. And the thing about this skill is it does about five solid hits. You have a 20% chance, right? So upon landing a skill, right? So every time it hits, that 20% chance is, is trying to proc. The second time it hits, it'll try to proc again. The third time it hits, it tries to proc again. So after, so since you're doing five hits on this skill, the chances of you getting this 20% chance or 20% chance of proccing this skill to reset it are very, very high. In fact, I'm so confident, I'll show you guys here in a second just how often that thing procs is just ridiculous and then he's got the shield which makes him godly for pvp so not only is he immune to darkness not only is he immune to fear but he also has a critical hit shield and this is very very strong in pvp and also gaining the super armor in pvp is actually very very strong too because you won't get interrupted whenever you're using that skill and then his skills, right? He's got the increased attack buff on the first skill. He applies fear, which is sick. And then he deals an additional damage equal to 140% of attack upon landing a hit on the target in darkness. And this first skill, he like blows a little kiss thing. And he does this thing where he's kind of like Leon. He's got these blue or black orbs with green inside him rolling around him. And they do a crazy amount of hits. And they do constant hits, right? Whenever you're spamming skills, it actually does constant hits. So you're going to get this 140% of attack. That's just nuts, right? On top of the 250% attack from his core. On top of the extra 140% of attack if you have Fess Ash on the team. I mean, you hear all this these attack buffs, right? It's just nuts. 
And then he's got the hyper armor, right? And this can be used while standing or airborne. So as long as he's on his feet or he gets knocked in the air, he can go into this skill, which is pretty sick. And then he has the increased target damage received, which is a meta skill that increased better by 30% for eight seconds. And then he's got the PVP exclusive, which disables the target's active skills and roll for four seconds upon landing a skill, which is very, very strong for this character. And then his third skill gives him an increased attack, or not third skill, but his default gives him an increased attack by 20% for 10 seconds. Whenever you use this skill, it's a really short thing. You're still going to have this increased attack afterwards. So that's another thing that's buffing up everything else that he already has, right? This is a damage multiplier. So whenever you use this default and then you go into his regular skills or you go into his 3PG, whatever it is afterwards, you're going to have this 20% up for that 10 second duration. It's, it's godly, guys. I mean, he's, he's freaking ridiculous. Now, so far from the testing that I've done so far, anyways, this card set has been the best for him. Now, I'm pretty sure the new BS set that is in the banner currently is probably going to be even stronger than this because it actually can increase your darkness damage. And the run that I'm going to show you guys, I did it with this card setup. Now, I am using this option card right here, right? That does give the increased attack, but it also increases the critical rate by 7%. This is actually quite massive for this character because he already has 4% critical rate in his core. So he's got 11% critical rate always with that option card on him. And for the Shermie option card, because we're going to be going against Lunatic Nightmare Geese, you need shock damage. And whenever you're landing critical hits or right when you're landing a critical hit, then you can actually deal shock damage. And having that extra 7% critical rate and that 4% critical rate from his core, He's going to be proccing that thing a lot. I mean, he, and then, like I said earlier, he does an insane amount of hits. And now with this boss set, it's actually pretty godly on him. Uh, it does give a solid increased attack by 21%. And then it also gives you the increased damage of boss in your fighter active skills by 25%, which is crazy. And then increased attack by 20% for 5 seconds when they land a blast skill on a 10 second cooldown. It's a really, really good set for him. So those of you that might have this set, uh, you're going to find it's actually quite nice on Ash. And then his 3PG gives him another increased attack, which is dope. And I do have the one that has the increased attack by 2% on him. He has max castles, guys. I mean, this is an A1 character. Now, imprint stones. The imprint stone that they give you for this character, I wasn't really happy with it, to be perfectly honest, guys, because it increases strike skills. This stone increases blast skills. Most of Ash's damage comes from blast skills so i really feel like this is the better stone to go with but this is from volume one this is a volume one stone this is a stone that came from bs rugal and bs orochi the original bs characters so a lot of people aren't going to have it but even if you don't have this stone like there are gold stones that give double attack and increase the blast that would be a really good one to put on him but also you know you could just use the regular bs stone that does increase strike skill he does have strike skills in his kit it's just most of them are blast the other bs stones either give decreased defenses or they give a gain power or a 15 percent pg gain and really ash just isn't really going to benefit that much from those stones i mean they still would be okay but and then the newest one the volume five stone gives increased strike skill damage but i really think the volume one stone is the best the one that gives the increase to blast skill damage uh, for him in this particular slot now his other stones that he has the second and third stone. This one here gives him a decreased enemy defenses by a certain percentage, by 20% whenever it's maxed out. But really, in my opinion, if you have the BS Volume 3 stone, which increases active skill damage, or you have the BS Volume 4 stone, which increases critical damage, I think that would be a better choice than this. It's still a good stone for him, but I think the Volume 3 and the Volume 4 stone would actually be better for him. Now, this third stone, I think, is going to be pretty godly because it actually is going to increase target damage received on top of the double attack. I think this is going to be pretty damn godly. I mean, there is a cooldown on this thing, but this is five seconds out of the 10 seconds. So I think that's going to be the optimal stone. I don't really know for sure because I don't have them at A3. I can't really test it. Can't compare it to other stones. It's the first time we've seen one of these stones in the game. So I'm just purely speculating at this point. Now, you're probably wondering, how strong is this character? Well... Probably the strongest character in the game, guys. Uh, he's probably number one. I can't guarantee that. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks that way because he's doing something right now on my account that no other character has ever been able to do. None. Leona, Dizzy, Guinness, 
soul. None of these characters could do what this guy is actually going to do. And the run that you're going to see today at A1, none of them. Uh, and we're going to use his leadership, the 60% increase of Boston Inner Fighter. And we're actually using Shizuru, who was a completely free to play character that actually gives obtained power by 10% and then increase attack by 15% if HP is 7% or above. But the decreased skill cooldown is really what I want for him. So if you were playing during the Shizuru event, you more you everybody got Shizuru to A1. If you were logging every day and playing it, everybody got her to A1. So you'll easily have that decreased skill cooldown, which is actually very, very important, especially when you have a Shermie option card on this character. So that way you can apply shock damage to break the meter against Lunatic Nightmare Geese. And I do have Psyche on the team for the extra 20% HP, and I do have Ash on the team for the extra increased damage by 140% whenever we're, whenever we're using our active skills. So check this out. This is pretty damn nuts. Now this is only my second time playing Psyche or Ash, right? I'm almost calling Psyche. All right. And the thing is, man, that third skill can just keep reset. You see it proc right there just a second ago. Now we got our attack buff by 20% from the default and boom. This is an A1 character. You only need to get him once and then get his memory. Look at the damage numbers that he's putting up. I'm not even sure if I'm playing him correctly, to be honest, in this run, because I haven't really practiced him with him much at all. But the cool thing is, like, the way his darkness works, he's, he's going to be doing darkness no matter what. As long as he's landing attacks, he's going to be doing darkness. And on top of that, you know, obviously he's going to be doing a lot of critical hits. Right? That third skill is nuts. And whenever you're standing close to the opponent, and you got the first skill up, and he's doing that little spinning orbs, that are spinning around him, he just does so many hits, he can break that meter pretty damn quick. No character in my roster could do what he's doing right now. None of them. Not at A1. No way. There's characters that could do this, you know, when they're leveled up. You got a bunch of imprint stones on them. But at A1, look at that, guys. He's already hit almost 400 million in, you know, the first minute. Look at him go. This is ridiculous. And obviously, the 3PG doesn't get interrupted. It can interrupt Nightmare Geese's uh, Raging Storm, so it's going to interrupt Rugal. I can't wait to test this guy against. Omega Rugal on Expert, you know, because you need darkness. He's going to be bonkers for that crap. The amazing self-buffing leadership. Man, look at him. Now we got the extra 20% attack buff going on. And look, look at me hit the third skill. I'm just tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping. It, it lasts for an entire... Once that thing procs, you have a three-second duration to where you can keep just tapping it and tapping it and tapping it for the entire three second duration and just do an insane amount of hits. I mean, this guy is broken as hell. And this is just the very beginning. I mean, just imagine what he's gonna do, like if he's leveled up. Look at these numbers, this is crazy. I mean, look at him guys, look at him. He's going to hit 900 million. 900 million at A1. Look at that. 900 million at A1. There are no characters, guys. Not Dizzy, not Leona. None of them can hit those kind of scores with at A1. They can't do it. They can't do it, man. That is... I mean, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless looking at that. That is absolutely ridiculous that he can put out that kind of damage. And whenever you take him into championship, I'll show you guys. I mean, this is just, he's just, he's broken. He's broken, man. Oh, man, we need to go back out. Click on this one here. Sorry. You can actually see what's really going on with this character and, and other reasons why he's actually so strong and so good. Now, cards aren't being applied right now. So when you're looking at damage numbers, you know, don't pay attention to that. This is him without using cards. But look at how fast he can cancel his skills. And look at me hit the third skill. That, like I said earlier, that third skill lasts for an entire 
three second duration. You can sit there and spam that damn thing for a good three seconds before it runs out. Then it's on a 20 second cooldown before you can do it again. And like I said, it procs all the time. So you're doing an insane amount of hits on top of all the dark damage, on top of having the extra critical, you know, the extra damage on a critical hit, on top of having the extra critical rate that he has in his core. I mean, the guy is set up freaking OP as hell. And this 3PG is just beautiful. I love it. I love it. My only real disappointment really with it is that the 3PG doesn't work on a regular version of Ash. And I know it's not the same Ash. I know, I know. But still, it would have been cool if they would have done that. But I mean, guys, like the range. Right? That's some damn good range. And then the 3 goes all the way across the screen. And the 1, look at how many hits this thing does, right? I'll just hit the 1. And just like Leona with the ore spinning around, look at all the hits that damn thing does. Right? And on top of the fear, of course. It's just crazy. Look at this. 16 hits. 16 hits. And then when I hit the third skill, 10 hits. You got 26 hits just between those two skills. And whenever that third skill actually procs, you get, you get the proc from the core, and it resets, you're going to get even more. So here we go. Thirty-one hits right there, and some of those hits actually missed from that third skill. He's just set up nuts, guys. I mean, they made him into a freaking god. He literally is a god. He's beyond those from the past. He is a literal god. I'm actually I'm blown away by this guy, guys. I really am speechless when it comes to this character. I don't even know what to say because he's just so over the top you know once again that marble brings in some insane power creep and it's not only with ash it's also with nameless too but ash has really set the bar high as far as damage output as far as being the strongest character in the game i think he might be number one above all characters in the game but i need to do some testing i need to do some comparing to really know if that's true or not but let me know how y'all feeling about ash and I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GMT plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See ya.